Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us for Comics from the Future, our show that we do every single Friday where we preview what comics are coming up, what you're going to want to order, and all that good stuff. But first, we have to say we reached 1,000 subscribers Woo! on YouTube. I can YouTube. see behind me. <laughs> Andy made this special <laughs> background just for it. So yeah, thank you so much to everybody who has liked or commented and most importantly subscribed to our channel because shockingly, well maybe not shockingly to anybody, uh, we, have, <laughs> we have reached 1k, which is super cool. You can see that on our uh, YouTube channel, channel. YouTube yes. channel right now just says 1k. So. And when you get 1k subscribers, YouTube sends you to Hawaii. We just got back. <laughs> That's where these came from. They definitely didn't wow. come from the party store Megan went to <laughs> shortly before this broadcast. We're all super relaxed. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Just can't thank everybody enough. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, well, then what are you waiting for at this point? So, yeah, we got a lot of stuff we've been thinking in the background of what we can do now that we have a thousand folks watching us every single week, multiple times. Um, and so we do have some plans, including some extra shows, some extra content where we're going to do some deep dives on some topics or different comics, older stuff, newer stuff. So tell us below what you are interested in hearing more about, for sure. And we're working on a t-shirt. So many of you, I can't believe we don't have a t-shirt yet, but we have been working on it. It is in late stages at this point. I've been taking a lot of white t-shirts and drawing little pictures on them. <laughs> All individual. So yeah, that is definitely coming as well. Hopefully by Free Comic Day is our goal on that one. So yeah, and of course you guys know we're, we're, we're working on a website and hopefully by the end of this year that will happen as well. So you can order from us a little more efficiently. So yeah, all that said, let's let's give it a little... We're, we're going to have some guests on as well. Yes. We're going to have yes. We're going to have shows where we have guests. Some will be people from the comic industry. In fact, um, Chattanooga sort of native. He lives right outside of Chattanooga. Uh, artist and our friend Alex Ogle. It's just been reported that he's doing a cover for Amazing Spider-Man number 75. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in the previews catalog if yes. you want to show the camera a little bit. It is right there. Alex Ogle, congratulations. It's kind of uh, interfering with our green screen here because <laughs> it's a green cover. <laughs> wow, he has magic in those covers. So we're gonna we're gonna beg him to come on the show. We, we know a few other people mm -hmm. in comics, so we're, we're just going to pump up what we're doing, ramp, ramp it up a little bit more. Yep, that's, so. that's the plan. So, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you to everybody who supports us in store or online, and this is for you. Let's give it a little cheers. Maybe turn your volume is this down gonna, Is this going to blow our hands off? We'll All see. right, three, two, one. Mine worked. <laughs> Mine, there we go. There you go. Yay. <laughs> Awesome. Really no, it's on the camera. <laughs> Let me grab that. <laughs> Perfect. Man, if only this was in 3D. That would have been amazing. <laughs> okay, we should probably do our jobs and do the normal show what? now before everyone tunes out. Yeah, I think this was like our flagship show, the one we started first. So let's give the people what they want and preview the upcoming goodness. Okay, so the first comic we are going to preview is from DC. It is Batman Secret Files Clown Hunter number one. So this is a character, Clown Hunter. He came about during James Tynion's uh, run on Batman during the whole Joker War. So who is Clown Hunter? And by who is, I mean, what makes him up? Because mm -hmm. he's different than Batman in one very major way. Clown Hunter will kill. Uh, he doesn't believe just in reforming. He believes that he particularly hates clowns. He has a reason from his past that he has made clear to Batman before that the Joker killed his parents. Mm -hmm. So if uh, he wants to, he will kill clowns. Now, what? Why? Why is he that way? You know, why is it Batman won't and and he will? This issue, which I got to read a, a preview of actually a little bit before the show. It shows him back in his time at Gotham Academy having to deal with bullies. And at the same time, it shows you what he's doing right now, which is he is stalking this one clown who's trying to... He's trying to build up more clowns for when Joker comes back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he assumes he's coming back, which I'd say is a safe assumption uh, yeah. in a Batman book. Um, so Clown Hunter is stalking this clown... When it turns out he actually falls into a trap that Punchline has set. 
And I'll tell you something. I, I read this one shot. It is very brutal. It's a lot of Clown Hunter having to endure a lot of pain. Mm. And through this pain, you get to see the backstory and why is he this tough and why is he different to Batman. So really cool one shot. That is the regular cover to it. And then we have the variant by Kofi Ofosu. It's not a name I think I've heard before, but a very cool fisheye lens. How do you think here. Batman feels about him having a baseball bat using a batarang in it to do some mm. pretty brutal, <laughs> brutal attacks? Bat I mean, Batman doesn't like anything about what Clown Hunter is no. doing at all. So. No, and that's just insult to injury. Yeah. Next up is a new Black Label book from DC. They have not forgotten about the Black Label stuff. And I'm really excited about this one because I listened to an interview with Tim Seeley, who is the writer of this, and it sounds like he got to go all out on this one. So this is Superman versus Lobo. It's going to be a three-issue um, kind of prestige format. It's that bigger size book. And the art is by Mirka Andolfo, who I love. Um, some of the preview pages that are up are just awesome, really cool. Uh, Tim Seeley has a really good sense of humor. You kind of have to when you write Lobo. Uh, but he said that when he did this, this isn't in your like main continuity. He got to pick the his favorite version of Superman and his favorite version of Lobo. So this is definitely like the like uh, Bisley era Lobo, the just you know intergalactic biker rough guy because right now lobo's in jail yeah so it wouldn't and, make sense and superman is kind of your classic like 70s um you know very good guy superman and so i think you pick like the, what's the highest contrast in the two characters where were they at their like peak versions and so they're going to be going up against each other but uh the kind of story that that starts all this is there's a character named newman he is the most popular being in the universe, and he doesn't like all the attention that Superman and Lobo are getting in the uh, the universal news networks and everything. So he's going to try to do something to maybe pit them against each other. So I think this sounds really cool. It is Black Label, and he kind of promises, you know, he's using the Black Label. You know, some of them have been on the tamer side. This one sounds like it's going to be a little bit more on the, like, over-the-top violence, language, some naughty bits, so we'll have to see, um, but it sounds really, really cool. I'm very excited about this one. So we have the A cover here, which is uh, by Mirka Andolfo. We have the B cover, which is Simon Bisley. They got the classic awesome. logo artist they, to come you, back they, and do they a They had to do that. I mean, that just, you know, yeah. you got to include Bisley if you're going to have the the you know sort of most iconic logo yes and then finally we have the tony harris variant so i got a question and i haven't read this yet i don't think we got a preview mm, of this one no. i wonder if this character newman if, is that a seinfeld nod <laughs> newman <laughs> right <laughs> it's spelled in it. u-m-e-n but it could be like his a like little his, nod to it because yeah. you know seinfeld's a big comic fan and seinfeld's big Superman favorite fan. character yeah. is superman yeah. so yeah. i like that idea that you know especially i hope when we see him it's like oh yeah that's <laughs> seinfeld verse <laughs> all right this is a big one yes. coming up from marvel this is going to be uh okay how should i start this without being too spoilery i think it is no small thing to say that kang is going to potentially be a big part of marvel movies. we do Four. know that he has been cast for ant-man 2 yeah. or ant-man 3 yeah. yeah so gonna be a big deal in the future so marvel has to get us comic readers ready for what's to come so i think this mini series is one it's a five part series um the first one is a little bit oversized um, but they're going to give us a little bit more about his origin, tell us who this character is, get us used to them a little bit. He's been a pharaoh, he's been a villain, he's been a warlord, he's a master of time, and I think this series is going to try to tease out just some more, uh, an understanding, because he is super powerful. A lot of people have questions about him There's right now. There's a lot now. of questions. <laughs> There's, I mean, even built into his own identity is just some very confusing potentially yeah. stuff so i think this is going to help us move to a sense of who he is so this is going to be a cool series i think a lot of people are going to want to get on this yeah. of course so make sure to sign up early 
I, hopefully your store will not <laughs> run out of these, but uh, you, you never know. So I, I'm going to chime in real quick because also before the show, I got to read a preview of this. And it was really good. It's good. it's complicated. I'll tell you that. You cannot flip through it quickly. And um, it's sort of like if you're going to figure out who Kang is at his core, you can't start with the one in the background there. you got to start with the one in the foreground, the one that's in the hourglass, mm -hmm. a younger version. Yes. So that's as much as I'll say. It's it's uh, they, they do a good job of creating a Kang that you've never sort of known before. Mm. Cool. It's a really good, complicated first issue, but a really you good You kind of want a Kang story to be complicated, because you, you are... Yeah, it has to be. It's kind of like a Fantastic Four thing. It's very science-y and very it, big it, picture. It made my head spin, but not because it was confusing. There, mm -hmm. there was just a lot going on. I am really can't wait for issue number two. So, But All right. for now, you can order issue number one. There's a lot of coverage for this, of course, because Marvel is making a lot of this. So here we go. Throwing it back. We got a lot of Stormbreaker variants. This is the Busto Stormbreaker variant. The Carnero cover. I'm going to not say Stormbreaker every single time because all of these are. Uh, so the Kassara, Coelho, Gleason. I, I think I might be. You're going too fast. Office. You're at Coelho. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it we, out. We, we got to let people see these for just a minute here. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> There's the Gleason. The Gleason. Snap really through it. Really I knew cool. I'd be able to find my place when we finally landed on Momoko, which is here. Three different versions. Yeah, people may be familiar with some of those heads, mm -hmm. especially the weird mustache one at the top. Okay, and then we also have, you guys know it, the knock headshot. And then the Silva Stormbreaker. One more, Scotty Young. Yeah, gotta get Young. <laughs> it's a very like Marvin the, the Martian. Martian. Yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Planting his flag on the yep. planet. So this is, this is a big, big one this week. Okay, uh, also from Marvel, there is the beginning of X-Men, The Trial of Magneto. So this is issue number one. This is going to be a five-issue series, or rather a five-issue trial, I mm. guess. So uh, at the end of the Hellfire Gala, they discovered Scarlet Witch's body, and she appears to have seemingly been murdered. Somehow, Magneto is accused Um you know, they definitely had problems in the past, but we still don't know why exactly he's going to be sent like, out. You were alone. the last person on the scene. You were yeah, the last yeah. scene with her. Yeah, and so they're going to have a trial to discover, did he do it? Was it somebody else? I mean, if it turns out it was him, I just think that's too simple. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know who it was, but it would be crazy if it was just in the end. Yep, it was Magneto. <laughs> um, but I guess that's why it's going to take five issues to sort of uncover what happens. Uh, and they also promise in this that the trial is going to divide Krakoa. I think that's probably the most interesting thing that can come of this, is mm -hmm. who's going to side with Magneto and who's going to blame Magneto. I'm more interested to see what this dredges up than you know, ultimately who, yeah. who did it. So, But we got a lot of really good covers on this one. Here is the Art Germ variant, Scarlet Witch is not looking so dead there. <laughs> Here is the Mark Brooks variant. I think this might be my favorite. But I, so I really elegant. Like. And Mark Brooks, he always gives you so much to just look at. You just mm -hmm. look at a little piece of it and enjoy that and just move your eye a little more and enjoy another piece of it. Here is the Momoko. Another good one. I mean, really, it's going to be hard to... Mm -hmm. If you're only somebody buys one or two covers, it's going to be a tough one. Here's the Todd Knock one. This one... It just makes me laugh. The intensity of the <laughs> eyes. Here is the Ramita cover. And lastly, this was a surprise one because we were talking about how mm -hmm. much we like this. This is the Torque cover. I think this one's really good. Yeah, a lot of... It's got that classic Bela Lugosi Dracula, the light that just goes right across the eyes. And the, the, color, the coloring made me think of Frizen for a second. Yeah. No, this is Torque. Next up... Gonna shoot straight with y'all. I don't know everything about Warhammer. What? I know. It's right <laughs> outside this door. Um, but I'm a big fan of like the the character concepts and the, the miniatures and all that. I just don't know how to play the game. But this is for all of you big fans out there of uh, Warhammer 40k. We just had the 
uh, Caligar, Marnie's Caligar, Marnie's yeah. Caligar series that ended not too long ago. A lot of people who had never even read comics before, but were big gamers, right. tried it out and it was really cool. This is Warhammer 40k Sisters of Battle by Perun Gronbeck, uh, which is, uh, he's a really cool writer who was working on um, Valkyrie, the, uh, the recent Valkyrie series. And then the art is by Edgar Salazar, and it is about a team, uh, the team of these, um, like, female-led marines on a mission to retrieve a lost inquisitorial alkalite. But, of course, it doesn't go to plan. It talks about, um, like, underground cities and all of that. So people who really are into it will get, I'm sure, a bunch of subtle nods. They always put a lot in there. But it says it's also pretty new reader-friendly, which I believe Marvel would not leave people high and dry if they did not understand all the inner workings of the game. So this is our A cover. Then we also have the uh, Games Workshop variant. Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about is in a different orientation. So don't feel the need to, to flip on your side or anything. <laughs> don't adjust your set. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't adjust your screens. Okay, so this is called Echo Lands. It is a new image series by J.H. Williams, or W.J.H. Williams. Nope, just J.H. Uh, anyway, and Hayden Blackman. So J.H. Williams did the, this team together actually has worked on Batwoman together. Uh, J.H. Williams has done some stuff on Sandman. So really uh, a good team working on this. It's going to be an ongoing series in, as we said, this landscape format. So even the interior art, it's really gorgeous. There is a preview of this on Previews World. Um, it's going to be in that format. So we haven't had that in a while in a comic that yeah. I've seen. But it's, it's been done. Will, will that fit in a regular bag and board? Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's just that it's the they layout just, they just is it. yes, okay. different. But his artwork is such uh, almost like fine art that it, you can see how the landscape, it, it draws your eye through it. And mm -hmm. Like in Batwoman, he would do her cape and the cape would be the next panel and yep. stuff. Like yeah, it really fits. His style fits this. Yeah. So it was intentional. Not just a gimmick. So <laughs> this is a bizarre future world where our main character here on the cover, she is a thief, and her, through her shenanigans, that's not the right word for this, <laughs> <Shenanigans. laughs> her thieving shenanigans, um, she's going to help uncover the mysterious past. This is, like I said, they're in the future. Um, they are controlled by a tyrannical wizard and his daughter. So this is the most interesting thing about this, I think, is that it's supposed to be a genre mashup. So... I think this makes sense. They're dealing with the past. They're in the future. But they promise horror movie monsters, vampires, cyborg elves, retro rocket ships, some Roman stuff. I don't know. It's, it's a lot going on. <laughs> so I think there's going to be a lot of traveling, um, a lot of good fantasy elements as well. So really interesting concept if you're looking for some... I don't. I wouldn't call it high fantasy, but it sounds uh, like if you're looking for anything, yeah, <laughs> it's so, going to be so a little bit for everybody. everybody. Here. <laughs> so yeah, coming up soon, and this is the A cover. Then we have a B cover, uh, both by Williams. Okay, before we continue, I want to mention next. I was supposed to go over King Spawn number one. Uh, so many of you, if you check other sites, you might have thought that was available for order this week. Image has pushed it back a week. It's not due to a production issue. They're, uh, they're adding another incentive cover, a 1 in 250, that Todd McFarlane is going to sign himself. So they've decided to give all us retailers one extra week to see if we want that or not. So if you're wondering, hey, why, why are we talking about you know, King Spawn? That is why. We'll be talking about it on next week's Comic from the Future. So then back to me, I was thinking back and forth if I should sing the opening of this in <laughs> Freddie Mercury style, but I will not. Um, this is Killer Queen, a new book from Dark Horse. Uh, it is a, seems like a crime, intergalactic, futuristic, but with some, some comedy in it. Uh, it follows Max and Alex, are reformed intergalactic assassins called the Killer Queens, now on the run from their former boss, a fluffy monkey with a jetpack. Which... Who hasn't had one of those bosses? <laughs> Always, you know, Fluffy Monkey's fine. When they have a jetpack, they're rough. <laughs> um, but the really cool thing about this is the writer of this is David M. Boer. And if you don't recognize the name, that is the creator and writer of Canto. Mm -hmm. right. The huge IDW hit Canto 
about the little uh, mechanized knight. And I think this is really cool. This is that writer stepping out another company. I think we have a lot to see from this, uh, this creator coming forward. So we knew Kanto was a really hot book, especially when it came out, really under-ordered, and now I mean, it's very beloved. Mm -hmm. So he's got the, the writing shops, so you might want to check out Killer Queens. And then there is the uh, B cover that is Abel's is the the name very neat very uh movie poster yeah and then we have the bartell variant all right next up is another one from image called second chances this the premise is there is a guy who operates a hotline where you can call and if you have a good enough reason you can get a new identity for some money and if you have a good enough referral you get a whole new identity um, this main character meets someone from his past in this who doesn't have a good reason to change their identity but needs it regardless so they have to work together on that so this is promises to be a psychedelic action-packed noir they said it was John Wick makes a meets a French existential fever dream because we're all really familiar with those. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, honestly, it look a pretty tried and true premise. Like, something mm -hmm. you've heard, you, you might have heard this before, but maybe a different style. And a good story is a good story at the end of the day. I haven't read this yet, but definitely going to check it out. I would use that hotline when you go to a restaurant and they hand you your food and they say, enjoy your food. And you say, you too. And you walk <laughs> off and you're like, man, I wish I could do that again. I sound like a real idiot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> then you call that hotline. You explain it. I'm sure that's a good enough reason. I think so. <laughs> All right. And that's the one cover on this one. Okay. Also, um, just with one regular cover from Aftershock Comics, here comes something very weird and creepy. <laughs> this is a one shot horror book called God of Tremors. It's, I believe, double size at six ninety nine, And it is about exorcism, demonic worship, and epilepsy. I, I kid you mm. not. So it's, a, it's set in the 19th century, um, sort of Gothic era. Mm. And this young boy starts having seizures. And so the, his kind of cruel, backwards father pulls him out of school and decides he's going to exercise the demon out of him. But is it is is the demon doing that to him, or is it possibly uh, something more evil at his father's evil gothic pagan house? So, uh, you know, that's why I guess they call it God of Tremors. A very, very weird, very unique horror idea. Uh, just by the cover, I think this one's going to be scary. Yeah, and Aftershock has been doing some of these kind of magazine-sized, a little bit right. bigger um, one-shots. We had the one previous from uh, Cullen Bunn mm -hmm. did one. So it's cool they're kind of doing this. Um, it, it gives creators a, a, a different format to tell the story. So yeah. really cool. Next up is a new book uh, called Dancing with the Dragon which I did not know I was expecting this to be medieval fantasy. It is not. This is actually um, about a character named Connor O'Sullivan. He's a limo, limo driver for the triads, uh, and he took uh, the job from one of his dead customers. So, of course, that's just going to go really well for you when you uh, get your job that by that means. No one's going to be coming after you. Um, but now he thinks that he is going to be able to support his girlfriend and live the American dream. But, of course, it's not that easy when people come a-calling. So uh, this is by Rob McKinnon, uh, and it is a new book, I believe, from is this Scout? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. The, the cover of this looks like so many um, buddy cop comedies from yeah. the 80s and 90s, just the, the pose they're in. But... All right, next up we have, that was some other number ones. Now we're going to show you some variant covers and some cool stuff. So this is Catwoman number 34, starting here with the Jenny Frizen cover. And then we also have the Suicide Squad. Man, they love showing the polka dots. Polka dot uh, man. And so many, yeah. I love, I, honestly, I love it. I adore it. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted you to see both of these covers for Catwoman number 34. Another, uh, I guess, sort of literally hot Variant cover <laughs> is for Flash 
number 773. This is the Corona variant, and you have Heatwave on there, who of course was uh, doing some very nasty stuff last issue and is continuing in this one. Uh, meanwhile, Wally West, he, he's trying to just work a regular job, earn money for his family. Mm -hmm. He's working for Mr. Terrific right now. Um, I know Andy and I, we talk about on the Tuesday <laughs> show, but Flash, Flash has been a great book. Yeah. So we just want to make sure you guys see this variant. Next up is Justice League number 67. This is the B cover, the Alexander Alexander Lozano uh, variant. And in this one, uh, this is the Justice League going up against that new team, the Cosmic Order, which is kind of the, uh, the team that the United Planets put together. Uh, but also really interesting in this is Green Arrow has to come uh, to the decision, is he going to be a member of the Justice League or Checkmate? He's kind of been pulled in those two directions, and uh, I would imagine Checkmate would take a lot of your time with some of the crazy underground stuff they're doing. So, And really nice cover. Yeah, and if he kind of halfway wanted to leave the Justice League, I kind of think they would want him to leave. He always I mean... loves everybody the wrong way. Yeah, he does create some uh, tension in the group. Yeah. All right, next up is Legends of the Dark Knight number four. This is the B cover by Raphael Albuquerque, and in this issue, the Penguin is leading an assault against Wayne Manor. Of course, this is a standalone story for issue number four here, and you can kind of see that Wayne Manor in his cape. It's a really nice cover. Okay, so this is the awesome A cover by... This is the interior artist also doing the the cover, uh, Redondo. I really like these covers he's been doing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really inventive and cool. For Nightwing number 83, this series has been a surprise hit ever mm -hmm. since it came back from Future State. So um, Dick Grayson has inherited a ton of money. And what I think is really interesting, well, I can't wait to read this one, he is coming out of the, he's going into the limelight rather. Mm -hmm. He's coming out of the shadows into the limelight telling the people of Bloodhaven, hey, guess what, I'm rich, and I think I can help Bloodhaven with my money. So in essence, he's kind of becoming like a Bruce Wayne Yeah, character. that is interesting. Yeah, they don't really say it mm -hmm. outwardly, but that's what's happening. So I, I've really enjoyed this series, and this cover is, is really cool. You kind of feel like he's going to run into some of the problems of like, when he always blamed Bruce, like, you could do more with your money, and he's going to hit that same situation I, I, of I like, so. I see why he didn't. Yeah, and then we have... The also super awesome variant cover with him and his mm -hmm. puppy, his three-legged puppy. By and It's by uh, <laughs> Max Dunbar. Next up is uh, the B cover, the Sandoval cover for Shazam number two, part of this mini-series that uh, it just started. And really cool, Billy is on a mission. Uh, they started in the last one uh, because the Rock of Eternity has disappeared. And it is uh, possibly in hell. And so him and the other member of Teen Titans Academy named Dane are going through there and running into a lot of crazy characters looking for the Rock of Eternity. But also says that uh, something will be revealed that's really going to um, make him question the Teen Titans Academy and his place there. Hmm. All right, next up is Static Season 1, number 3. So this is the uh, number three of the six-part mini-series. This is the A cover. The variant is not available yet, but things are definitely ramping up and getting on the line with this issue. The government is rounding up the kids who were affected by the Big Bang. So a lot, lot becoming at stake here. This is just the A cover. Like I said, the variant wasn't up yet, but definitely if you're not signed up for the series and you want the number three, tell your story. Next up is... Truth and Justice number seven. This is the Yoon variant. And I'm always happy to see Zatanna yeah. back in anything. She does not get enough uh, screen time. But this is also the final issue of Truth and Justice. And in this one, uh, Zatanna is trapped in a dream world. And how'd she get there? And how is she going to get out when she doesn't have her powers? Zatanna is just a good subject for covers, too. Oh, yeah. So She's you can certain artists are like, I want to do this on a cover. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Wonder Woman, Black and Gold. This is the A cover, and it's for number three. Sorry, this is the J. Lee A cover. All of these covers have been great, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and then we have the Joshua Middleton cover as well. So in this issue, of course, you guys know this by now, this is Wonder Woman, black and gold. The story is told in black, white, and gold coloring, and there are a few different stories in this one. In this, she battles a cult, and she loses her lasso, and a few other stories going on. So that's black and gold, but this next one is blue and gold, number two. <laughs> it does this have is... more colors than those yeah. two. <laughs> this is the uh, Suicide, Suicide Squad movie variant. DC's been doing a bunch of variant covers mm -hmm. in honor of the new Suicide Squad movie. So in this issue, there's supposed to be some intergalactic assassin that, come, that uh, goes after Blue Beetle, um, and we'll just see if he can get them. <laughs> Next up is Moon Knight wow. number two, and this is just the A cover, um, but I, I think we expected Moon Knight to be really popular coming back with this new series, but still, it kind of blew us away how many people are so desperate to read a new Moon Knight series. So, really cool. This is the A cover, the McNiven the Cover. issue number one was just really strong issue mm -hmm. too. So it's like everyone came in wanting it, and then anyone who didn't come in day one heard the reviews were just yeah. really good, and then they all came in the next day. So Then, of course, we have the Momoko cover. We had someone coming in uh, when number one came out, and they're like, where's the Momoko cover? I know <laughs> she's going to have a cover for this. It's like, oh, this time you got to wait to issue number two. I like the subtle uh, blood flowers yeah. there. And then this is one of the variant covers that Marvel is doing that are called uh, NetEase uh, video game variants. So this is the Moon Knight cover for that. And there's going to be a lot more of those covers. And I'll tell you what they look like. Andy is right. Yeah, this is for Marvel's new online collectible card game, Marvel Duel. So this is the Guardians of the Galaxy number 17 games variant. Then we have the Iron Man 11 game variant and then the spider woman 14 i think there will be more of these in the future but it's our first batch of them okay so this is the a cover for black cat number nine just take a moment to take it all <laughs> in so that is star they made her cape you know sort of almost look like hair in a way but um this cover is by pepe Laraz. Laraz comes up with some really cool things to do yeah. on covers. So uh, we wanted to feature this one because even though there's variants, this one I, I just thought was really cool. And in this issue, so this is called Infinity Score, where Black Cat has been charged with trying to gather the Infinity Gems, which, of course, a lot of the gems are people or are fused with people. So it looks like she's going to go up against Star in this one, who, of course, has the Reality Gem thus the trippy mm -hmm. weird cover so i've enjoyed all this infinity stuff and i marvel keeps saying it's leading to something very big and i mean typically when they want to do something big the infinity stones are yeah. involved so next up is speaking of yeah. infinity stones this is miles morales spider-man annual number one part of the uh infinite destinies yep. Um, crossover event. This is the, I believe Ron Lim is doing all of these um, connecting. The connecting. Yeah, uh, and then this one is really interesting because Miles uh, is going either up against, teaming up with, we'll have to wait and see, the character Amulet that first appeared in Miss Marvel number 13, which it's cool, just like Star. This is a character that had ties to an infinity stone before this event some of the characters were kind of made up for this event but we're seeing also that some of the pieces for this have been laid a long time ago yeah yeah I and mean, it's a neat character so mm -hmm. i'm glad they haven't forgotten him all right this is sinister war number three the Varegi variant looking a little different for him but i love the sun smiling shining down on you cover <laughs> Uh, this is just a four-part series, so this is the number three issue for it, so make sure to get it if you need it. That's just a sort of Spider-Man I've never seen. It makes you seen. feel good. <laughs> I don't know. I like this. I can imagine him moving and being just like a little, little yeah. puppet guy. The, the exact opposite. Here is the variant cover for Gamma Flight Excellent. number three. This is the Pacheco connecting variant. I mean, just so creepy. You know, the, the Al Ewan, you know, he, he said all this, like, body horror yep. stuff up and everybody's just running with it mm -hmm. 
And there's also the Kyle Hotz variant for this one as well. So in this issue, some, some people are after Gamma Flight. It's a mystery. They don't tell you the solicitation. They say it's some people that readers have been clamoring for since the early days of Immortal Hulk. Honestly, I gave it some thought. I couldn't figure out who, to tell you the truth. So you just have to read it to find out. Next up is the cover for Way of X, number five. This is the uh, Inhyuk Lee variants he's been doing for all of these um, different Asian voices variant. And this one, uh, I'm not super familiar with the character, but this is Loa. So people who are big New Mutants fans are probably way more familiar with this character than I am, but a really nice cover. I dare say she now has a really awesome cover. You know, when yeah. you have a character that's not well known, it's like that might be the defining cover right yeah. there for this character. All right. All the X Corp covers have been really, really good. This is just the A cover, but we wanted to show it to you guys. And the, the cover artist is AHA. Yeah, that's that's one of those ones that stands out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with, yeah, doing a lot with a little. Okay, so this is the Nakayama Wanted poster variant for Star Wars number 16, which of course is part of War of the Bounty Hunters. So in this, you got Leia, Chewie, and Lando go up against Boba Fett, um, you know, as they're all trying to get ha frozen Han Solo. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you not want to check out a promise like <laughs> that? And here is the, uh, the Lucasfilm 50th anniversary variant for that. Actually, Pup, did these get out of... No, order? that's the Lucasfilm. Usually they have a little trade dress around them, but yeah. Okay, this good, is good. celebrating episode one. So then we have the War of the Bounty Hunters number three. This is the John Tyler Christopher action figure variant. And here is the wanted poster variant for this. It would be cool to put all the wanted posters yeah. together and see them at the end. So the, what's going on in Bounty Hunters number three, or War of the Bounty Hunters number three, is they say Darth Vader is going to go up against Jabba the Hutt. And, um, I mean, if that's not enough, you know, like the Sith Lord against the, the, you know, toughest, biggest gangster in the galaxy, Boba Fett is sort of like in the middle of the mm. whole thing. So I would really bet on stuff. Vader unless it was an eating competition, which I would love <laughs> to see like a hot dog eating competition between <laughs> Vader trying to fit the hot dog through his helmet and Jabba just scarf him I, down. I think when Charles Soule figured out what he was going to do for War of the Bounty Hunters, he pretty much said, what is all the stuff everyone wishes they could see finally? Yeah. And he's just kind of rolling it out and doing every single bit of it. It's such a cool, cool crossover. Next up is some variant covers for Noctera number six. One of my favorite artists, uh, Emma Lupicio, is doing this one. And then we have the series artist, Tony Daniel. And this is the this is the end of the first arc too. This is the last issue of the first arc, which which I has been enjoyed. stellar. Yeah, so good. Mm -hmm. All right, Radiant Black is back. Not that it was really gone, but <laughs> anyway, this is a new story arc with Radiant Black number seven. This is the B cover, or the want to be cover. I'm I'm sure I'm pronouncing that right. Watanabe. Right. There you go. Thanks. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the previous issue was the one I just talked about on our last show that was looking at Radiant Red and kind of left us in a uh, holding pattern waiting to find out what's going on with Radiant Black. And it, it'll be interesting to see coming back, maybe even who's under the helmet at this point. So yeah. go check out that Tuesday video if you guys haven't yet. But yeah, this is the beginning of a new arc. And then we also have the Radiant Black number five third printing coming out as well. All right. So this is the cover for Cherry Blackbird number two. So this is a comic from, I think it's Black Mask. Mm -hmm. This is your chance to tell your store, hey, I like that issue number one. Order it for me because often stores will cut back their order with issue two and three. Uh, the series has her chasing escaped souls from hell so that maybe she can get out of hell uh, herself. Mm. Same with this new series that just started, Savage Hearts from Dark Horse. This is the uh, rom-com jungle barbarian fantasy craziness. Uh, the first one is really fun, but another one of those series that if you don't tell your store, you may not get 
They may not order enough. They may just order enough for full boxes. So let your store know that you want this number two. All right. And next up, we have the Tales from Harrow County new uh, Fair Folk spinoff miniseries. This is the number two cover B by Crook. And this is Bermuda number two. Lots of number twos <laughs> coming out this week from, you know, sort of smaller companies. This is by uh, John Lehman and Nick Broadshaw. It is their epic adventure story, if you can't tell by the covers here. The next we have I've seen this Sumerian Manor, Man Eaters of Zambula number two. This is the Cassis cover. And see if people may know what this is homaging. Samarian's been doing a lot of homage covers. We dare you to figure it out. <laughs> oh, that's, you, that's you devil. <laughs> <laughs> Good, that's, that's. All right, this is Man Eaters the Cursed. This is issue number two. This is the cover B, Leah Metronique cover number one. This, this is not, you do not have to have read the original Man Eaters series to get on board with this one. It's very tongue-in-cheek, very meta. Uh, all the ads, even on the back of the book, are fake. So if you did enjoy Man Eaters and all those aspects to it, you will enjoy The Curse. It's very creepy. See, I put the screens together this time where we had Samaria, the Man Eaters, and it's like you read about the one side. It's almost <laughs> like it's one comic. And then, well, what are the Man Eaters up to? <laughs> now you get their side. That's not at all true. But... <laughs> Good sales pitch. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so next up we have, this is the variant cover by Leon for Jupiter's Legacy Requiem number three. This is, of course, Mark Miller's follow-up series to his two previous Jupiter's Legacy series. Um, it has not been renewed on Netflix, so now you can't just go there for it. You're just going to have to read the comic if you yes. want more Jupiter's Legacy. So once again, with issue number three, us retailers start ordering less of it. So if you're enjoying it, definitely put it on your pull list with whoever you shop with to make sure you get it. Next up is Barbarella number two. Uh, there is a ton of covers for this, but we picked out our favorite one. Uh, so this is the Derek Chu variant. Always nice seeing Derek Chu's covers. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we have Dynamite Lives number three, cover B Sudium variant, and we wanted to show this because another homage cover to Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. <laughs> I always get those two confused. Anyway, but they have switched positions here, so super cool. Yeah, it was funny. Ash is in the, the position of, of the girl. Okay, so this is the Cho cover for Invincible Red Sonia number four. Cho's been doing these covers with Red Sonia on it, saying things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's just sort of doing the outline, no color. So in this one, she's complaining about wearing her chainmail outfit out in thunderstorms. So it looks like she got shocked by lightning and this is the aftermath so could also be she's always holding that sword up in the air yelling something i'm yeah. sure the that's also a conduit hopefully she yelled i have the power right oh, before man. it happened that, that would be the best so but in this issue red sonia is going up against the grim reaper perfect so, yeah next up is the second issue of the new series beyond the breach uh from aftershock which jason you read the number one and liked it it yeah. was uh, super cool about this girl taking a road trip, uh, heading to California. She blacks out, wakes up, and monsters she's, everywhere. Monsters everywhere. Um, craziness. Seems like all of California is getting taken over by these monsters. And so, if you like number one, definitely want to subscribe to number two. Yeah. See, I'm I, like this series needed the number two. I wish it had been mm -hmm. double issue. So I'm waiting to see more. The first issue was a good taste, but it was like, where's the breach? Yeah. What's, what's really going on? All right. Nice House Lake on the Lake number two is getting a second printing. Can't recommend this series enough. It's really well conceived and thought out. Number two is just as good as number one. And in that same way that I, you really need number three now. Let's see, let's see what's going on. So, or how can things continue to fall out? So, Number two, second print, I just recommend that you get this because the number one continues to climb in value and so will the rest of the series. I'm not saying it's going to be just like something's killing the children, but I've already been surprised to see where this has gone up. So. Yeah, that number one first print. I know. Yeah, that's like a $20 bill or more at this point. Yeah. And they're doing the thing they did with the uh -huh. second 
the third print of the first cover it's where the, like the cover away. is starting to so get yeah. it while it still has a cover <laughs> if you wait till like the 17th printing there's just gonna be like part of the staple left they're gonna tell retailers detach the cover upon <laughs> arrival okay so this is an all ages thing from dc it is called batman lil gotham calendar days this is not a calendar this is a comic <laughs> What it is, is it's little versions of the heroes and villains and a lot of different stories that all are about different holidays. So there's a story at Christmas, a story at, um, obviously, um, Halloween. And so I, I liken it, it's sort of like a Batman family mixed with Muppet babies. That's what I would say. So it's all ages thing. It's just nine ninety nine. And it's done by uh, Dustin Wynn. Yeah. If, if I'm a fan of his covers, and you can just tell right by that cover that's Wynn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's done a lot. Uh, back in the day, he did a lot of Batman Little Gotham. And it's it's so much fun. It is great all-ages stuff. But it's also, uh, it's always fun to see, like, his interpretation of the weird villains and stuff. Like Bane or Joker, but a little, little fied. <laughs> Next up is Wonder Woman. This is Wonder Woman Agent of Peace Volume 1 Global Guardian. And this is a collection of the Digital First series as well as um, some of the Walmart original stories from the giant, the like 100 page giants they were doing. So great way to get all of that in one for only $20. Next up is Birds of Prey Fighters by Trade, the trade paperback. This is a $25 trade paperback. It reprints Birds of Prey 81 through 91. I was thinking, why are they soliciting this right now? But I think, uh, you know, with Suicide Squad coming out, they don't want you to forget, hey, it's not just Harley. we got these other characters as well. So <laughs> get a nice little chunk of Birds of Prey story here for just 25 bucks. Okay, that is our show in honor of us getting 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. That was, I mean, we set that goal like a year ago. We yeah. were like, let's do this. Let's see if we can make it to that 1K amount. Next up, 10,000. <laughs> and you can help us do it. Just get nine of your friends to sign up on YouTube right now. <laughs> yeah, so just stay with us. We are definitely, like we said, planning out some new things to do. So, yeah. Um, we'll, Onward we'll, and upward. We'll see you yeah. guys next time. Yep. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, Whether wait. You we need to get into our final forms. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now that the show's over, it's time to put on our actual work garb and get to business. We'll see you <laughs> next time.